Hey there YouTube, it's Nick with Feeding Fitness. Um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about using proper form in the gym. Um, this is something that I can't stress how important it is. Um, and I'm doing this video because lately, especially at my gym, form is atrocious. It's been so bad that I feel like I need to explain a few things. Um, let me put some of this out there. Some of you guys might know all this stuff already, but it'll be a good refresher to hear it again. Um, I'm going to talk about some basic things, and then I'll talk about some specific lifts that I feel like people are t always getting wrong, and talk about you know common ways people screw up their form on these lifts and how to correct it. Um, so generally, in general terms, when we're talking about using good form at the gym, um, there are a few things you can keep in mind. <clears throat> First of all, you should really only ever do sets of like true max out sets of one, sets of two and three on heavy compound lifts. Sets of three do not exist for curls or tricep extensions or, or things like that. If you're doing a set of one or two or three, you better be squatting, bench pressing, deadlifting, or maybe an overhead press. Uh, other than that, man, you need to not go so heavy. I'll see this all the time. Guys will do one rep maxes on the chest press or, you know, see how many, you know, load up an Olympic bar with 45 pound plates and curl for one. That's asinine. You know, stop that shit. <laughs> Don't load up and try and do isolation lifts as a max out. That's really, really stupid. Here's another tip to know if you're going too heavy on an isolation lift. If you need a spotter, it's wrong. <laughs> you should never need a spotter for things like curls and rows and tricep extensions. That's just stupid. Reduce the weight. Um, here's another thing I have a problem with. On any lift, unless you're doing a true one rep max and you fail at it, you shouldn't need help on the first rep. I don't understand you guys that want to pick up the 100 pound dumbbells and go to do the bench press and you need help through the entire set. You couldn't even get one single rep off on your own. What are you doing? Reduce the weight. Use a weight that you can manage. If you want a spotter and you need help on the last rep or the last two reps, that's one thing. But if you need help from the very beginning, and I'm not talking help to just get you in position, that's fine too. I'm talking you physically cannot complete one rep, your weight is just too heavy. This is silly. I hate seeing guys do this. It's just not helping yourself. So. What are some specific things I see people doing wrong on lifts? <clears throat> because it's Monday when I'm filming this, I don't know when I'll get this put up, but Monday, as we all know, is International Chest Day. I'll start with the bench press. Um, the two main things that I see go wrong with bench press, and I'm not talking about form intricacies, where you're putting your arms, you know, things that can be subtle and might be better for one person or another. I'm talking about glaringly obvious wrong things that people are doing. Number one thing, they're not going down all the way. On a bench press, the bar needs to come all the way down and touch you. Not halfway down or three quarters of the way down. Yes, I can go on and put a shitload of weight on the bar and do, you know, half benching. It's not hard, <laughs> but you have to go all the way down. People, um, or a tip I was given once, and I can't remember where I heard this, was take the bar so it touches your t-shirt. That's an interesting way to say it, but you, you, you don't want to bounce it either, because that's the second thing people do wrong. They take the weight and they go bounce, and that gives them some momentum and some advantage, makes it easier for them. So you want it nice, controlled down, touch your t-shirt, and then go up. Um, you can even add a little bit of a pause. I know you power lifters add a little pause at the end because you're required to do so to make your rep count. As a bodybuilder, um, that's not as important. Or if you're just lifting for you know aesthetics, that's not as important. But no bouncing, go all the way down. Those are the two things I see most often wrong with bench press. All right, we'll talk about squat. Now, there's a million things I could say on squat. There are so many things. It's a technical lift. There's a lot to it, um, which is ironic because it is also a basic human movement. Babies will squat with good form just picking things up, but somehow we screw it up when we get in the rack and throw heavy weight on. Um, first things first with squat, again, 
Number one thing most of you are doing wrong, you're not going low enough. You have to go at least to parallel or below. And what you think is parallel, it's not. You need to go a little further. Um, when you're, it's hard to tell when you're actually doing it. Film yourself. Have a video of yourself squatting. That's the best way. If you have a friend you can trust, that's almost as good. But if they don't really know how far down to go, then that's not helpful. But with a squat, <clears throat> you want to at least be parallel, if not a little bit below. These half squats and quarter squats, nothing will piss me off more than you're wasting time in the one squat rack in the gym doing this pussy shit. You need to go lower. Do not do half squats, please. Take the weight down. You look more ridiculous putting 315 on the squat rack and doing quarter squats than you do putting 135 on the squat rack and using good form. I don't care how little weight you're using, I will never make fun of you if you are using good form. Um, you need to get this idea out of your head that it's better to load up heavy weight and that, oh, I'll go a little bit lower every time until I'm doing 315 properly. No, reduce the weight, do it properly, and then slowly add the weight, not the other way around. You know, that's, that's just where you're going wrong on the squat. There's a million other things. Um, you should never round your lower back while squatting, should never happen, but um, that's a different discussion for a different video. I'm talking about glaringly obvious things right now. So go lower on your squats, please. <laughs> um, deadlift. You're going too heavy. That's a lot of people's problems. And I'm not saying don't do heavy deadlifts, but if your back gets compromised in a deadlift, you will hurt yourself at some point. You might get away with it for a while, but at some point, if you don't have good form on a deadlift, you're going to hurt yourself, and you can hurt yourself bad. So what I'm saying is just don't go so flipping heavy that you can't maintain a good form. Um, lower back cannot round on a deadlift. Uh, you can wear any kind of belt you want, but if you go too heavy and your form is off, you will snap your back. And um, a lot of times it's not, uh, it's more of a flexibility issue with deadlift. Um, make sure you're doing flexibility and mobility work so you're agile to perform lifts like deadlift. Um, <clears throat> so those, those are the big three, and those are the things I see wrong with those lifts. Um, isolation type exercises, all right, um, let's say like a tricep extension, if you're gonna do cable pushdowns or something like that. Um, basically the problem I see there is guys going too heavy and they're using momentum. Really anytime you're doing an isolation lift there should be no momentum. You know, curling shouldn't look like that, you should be straight. You know, rows shouldn't look like that. You need to really work on thinking about the muscles you're trying to use in a particular lift and isolating them. That's the reason they're called isolation exercises. Even compound lifts. Um, like bent over rows and whatnot, you shouldn't be using crazy amounts of momentum. Now, I'm not the kind of person who uses absolutely no momentum ever. I'm not going to say that. I think there are some times where a little bit of body English is going to be natural, especially on something like a row, but not to a ridiculous degree. So you have to find a weight that's appropriate that you can finish it without cheating too much. Um, but yeah, curls and extensions and Things like that, I see people just using wild amounts of uh, other muscles, other than, you know, on a bicep curl, we're trying to isolate one muscle, the bicep, and you want your arm completely at the bottom, locked out, and you want to come up and down. You don't want the shoulder to move. We're not lifting shoulder. We don't want the back to move. We're not lifting back. We're only trying to isolate the bicep. <clears throat> you want a good contraction and a slow negative. And if you can't do that, you're using too much weight. Here's a rule of thumb. If you're curling 50-pound dumbbells and you're not an absolute beast, you're using way too much. If you're doing lateral raises with 40-pound dumbbells and you're not Jay Cutler, <laughs> you're using way too much weight. Cut the weight down. You need to be able to use good form. This is not a lap raise. That's not how you do it. <laughs> You're isolating a muscle. Um, so just think to yourself, what muscle am I trying to work, or muscles, 
and am I working them? Am I using any muscles that I shouldn't be? So if you're doing a single muscle lift, you should only be trying to work that single muscle. You shouldn't be working three other things into it. I mean, I can't tell you how many people are using their back and their shoulders when they're doing something as simple as a bicep curl, only because they want to use <clears throat> what they consider a more impressive weight. But again, I will say every single time I am more impressed by someone who uses half the weight with good form than some idiot <clears throat> who's banging the bar and doing curls like that. So that's really all I wanted to say today. Get your form in check. Um, don't worry about the weight. I know this is hard, especially for you young guys, high schoolers and whatnot. You think the weight is the end-all be-all of getting big and strong, and it's not. It's progressively increasing the weight with good form. That's so much more important than having a big number. You know, if you took your bench press from 135 to 185 and you had good form the entire time, that's better than someone who does 225 with sloppy form. Trust me, you're going to ultimately lift more than that person anyways, because sloppy form can only take you so far. Um, you have to look kind of long term on this, good form keeps you safe, it helps build muscles better, and it's just all around a good idea. If you want to be in this game for years and years and years, you're going to have to have good form or else you're going to hurt yourself, and you might hurt yourself so bad that it can permanently inhibit uh, your progress as a weightlifter. So. That's really all I wanted to say. Please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Um, share it or uh, comment below in the comment section or over on the Facebook page at facebook.com upslash feedingfitness. And I'll see you guys next time.